Hello everyone, very good evening to everyone who has joined us on the International Bootcamp on Coding Artificial Intelligence Robotics for School Educators. We will be shortly starting just in few minutes. Till the time, let me introduce to my colleague, uh, Mrs. Tina Susan Joseph. Hello, Tina. Hi, Avis. Thank you so much. Uh, I'm very glad and excited to be a part of International Boot Camp organized by STEMpedia and ArtPack. I can see lots of messages and lots of uh, educators joined uh, us and watching us on live. On behalf of the STEMpedia family, I welcome you all to this International Boot Camp program. Let's empower ourselves and to empower the young minds. Yeah, thanks, Tina. Thanks for <laughs> wonderful uh, motivation for the teachers. It's amazing to have all the teachers joined us from around the world. So, teachers, till the time, uh, till the time we are starting, we would like you to please share uh, your country with your name on the chat, so that of course we can get an idea that from where exactly how many educators have joined. So, once again, a very welcome to all the educators joined us from around the world on the International Bootcamp on Coding, Artificial Intelligence and Robotics, especially for the school educators. So I can see All a lot of messages here in the chat. Yeah, Tina. All the educators, you can now uh, share your country name so that we will get motivated a bit. So that's amazing. I can see now teachers sharing their location. That's Prashant Pandey from India, Pezan Ahmed from India. That's amazing. Nusrat Tweet from UAE. That's amazing. Thanks, Ashok. Thanks all the educators for responding us on the chat. Me with my team will try and definitely get your all uh, answers on the chat. We would be responding you. Also, uh, educators, till the time we are uh, starting, I would like you all to please join our Telegram group. That is really very important because that is one and only medium of conversations. Right now, we are trying to communicate through and we want all of you to be uh, part of this international community for educators. So please scan this QR code or uh, just click on the link which would be shortly shared on the chat for the telegram, be a part of this community. Here we are going to keep you updated with all the latest updates of the bootcamp. Along with this, you would be able to share your creativity, share your knowledge with other educators from the world. A oh, very important thing, uh, I just uh, got some messages that some of the educators were not able to join the telegram group. So it's very important that you download the telegram first in your phone or uh, yeah, in your device, and then only you would be able to get into the group. So I hope you might have already uh, joined the Telegram group, still not joined, join us. We would be talking to you, uh, taking your feedback and many more things in the Telegram group. To go ahead, I would request Tina to please let us know about our collaborators and how exactly we are trying to make this bootcamp successful. Over to you, Tina. Uh, okay. Thank you, Ayush. Uh, definitely, it's not a one-man thing. Of course, um, it is, of course, an effort of uh, collaboratory effort of STEMpedia, uh, who is hosting this program, and Art Park, AI and Robotics Technology Park, um, by IISC Bangalore. We are supported by Niti Ayoga, that is Atal Innovation Mission. Uh, it is a part of central government's education program in India. It's been a pleasure to have All India Educator Forum and American Indian Foundation to be a partner and helping us to reach our mm -hmm. maximum. We also have international uh, partners like Purpose Smart Education from Palestine, Indian Institute of Education Singapore, Codex, uh, Apex Coding Academic Egypt, 
ITA uh, to Sanya and EduStream UAE. Now, uh, I think it's time to uh, explain some briefing about the objective and so that our educators will know about what we are going to um, do exactly. Over to you, uh, Ayush. Yeah, sure, Tina, and that's amazing. And once again, I would like to thank to all the collaborators for making this possible for the educators around the world. Uh, it's very important that we start the things with an objective so that in the end, we are able to achieve all of them. So I would like to share some of our objectives of the bootcamp. Of course, as our tagline, empower yourself to empower the young mind. Of course, we want to empower all the educators around the world on the wonderful uh, techniques of artificial intelligence, coding, and robotics so that they can be enhanced with the 21st century skills. It's very important that it's not only should be uh, just theoretical, but it's very important, as I said, that we uh, it should be hands-on. So that is why we are coming up in this bootcamp with a lot of hands-on activities for all of you. Apart from this, a very important point that it's not a matter that what subject teacher you are. We want you to enhance your skills, be a teacher ambassador for AI and uh, coding in your school. Now, of course, there are many other things to be covered, uh, but I would like our prestigious keynote speakers who have joined us today, which is who is Mr. Imakan Soni, who is a co-founder and CEO of Artpark. Artpark is an AI and Robotics Technology Park, uh, initiative of IISC Bangalore. Also, we have joined uh, today uh, Mr. Pankaj Verma, who is co-founder and CTO of Stempedia, and also an alumni of a prestigious Institute of India, IIT Kanpur, have joined us to share their visions on the bootcamp. So I would request uh, Mr. Pankaj to take the lead and please call up our uh, guest, Mr. Umakan Soni, sir. Yeah. So Umakanji is also with me only. So, uh, but first of all, uh, uh, hello everyone who have uh, joined us uh, during this educator bootcamp. Um, I would like to add a few. Uh, like uh, Ayush have already added a lot of objectives that we are looking for this bootcamp. But uh, I would just add what were the motivations that uh, we were having when we uh, like thought of creating something like this so uh, if you see uh, like uh, now nowadays technology is something which is uh, which has grown rapidly um, in india and in a lot of uh, developing countries as well the accessibility of internet technology smartphones is something which is very easy so that is a place where uh, like uh, i would say uh, students are already getting aware about all these things at an early stage. Now, how we can make them kind of, a, I would say, instead of becoming the consumer of the technology, becoming the creator of the technology. So that is the very big agenda that uh, STEMpedia also takes, how we can make the learning more creative, play-based and also experiential based as well. And that's where uh, like, uh, uh, we created this whole ecosystem. Now, uh, once the ecosystem is created, it's also very important that there are a lot of teachers who are able to teach the concept of AI uh, or robotics to the students in a very easy manner as well. So that's where this initiative of educating the uh, educators who can basically take up this ecosystem and implement it their schools and uh, into their training centers and those areas was created. And uh, it's a very big opportunity for all of you as well to basically go through a journey where you are about to learn something which is very innovative, which is uh, very interactive, and which I think all the students who would be interacting with you would like uh, as well. So, so it's a very uh, good opportunity for all of you. And uh, we have a lot of uh, sessions uh, planned for you uh, during this Educator Bootcamp. And uh, they, they, all the things uh, would basically be uh, something where you are creating a lot of uh, projects, real life projects and uh, learning the, uh, the technology as well. So, so that's the main agenda that we are taking with this Educator Bootcamp. And uh, yeah, so, so that's it from uh, my side. So, so uh, 
uh, Makanji is also joining, so he will also uh, uh, talk about uh, the uh, about Art Park as well. So till that time, Ayush, uh, can you hear me? Yeah, I can. Yes. Yeah. So that's uh, really amazing uh, to hear, Mr. Pankaj. And as I said, like uh, we have came up with this uh, boot camp with a collaborative effort of our uh, wonderful partners so that we yes. can educate all the teachers all the educators around the world and there have been many other many of the uh, very i should say very renowned institutes and the collaborators like uh, atal tinkering lab who has uh, definitely came up with bringing these educations for the india for the teachers who are teaching in the uh, schools so we would be talking about many other things on this uh, before that, let me just share my screen and uh, let me just show you that uh, what would be the exact takeaway uh, for you all educators. So I hope my screen is completely visible and I think uh, Mr. Umakan sir has joined. So before yeah. I move ahead, I will uh, request Mr. Umakan sir to please share his vision. Hi everyone, it's fantastic to be here. Uh, let me just give you a a bit of perspective about myself, uh, close to 20 years in technology space and uh, last 12 years have been in AI space, artificial intelligence. I built one of the very first AI chatbot companies out of India uh, in 2009-10. It was very early. I set up the first venture fund focused on AI called Pi Ventures. Uh, we supported around 15 companies and uh, I advise government of India uh, on AI and um, last uh, three years I've been working very closely with government of India. I helped Niti with the AI strategy for India. And one of the big areas that we identified was how do we need to supercharge our education system because we've got 300 million kids, almost 30 crore kids that we have got. And how do we develop their potential so that they can take a huge uh, <clears throat> leap and be a major uh, force to reckon with in the, the AI age, AI driven experience economy that is actually coming up, uh, which is going to bring in the next generation of jobs and opportunities. Now for that kind of uh, AI age, you require two specific skills. One, learning to learn. That means uh, you're not just learning A, B, C, D, but you're learning the alphabets, which will allow you to learn anything right? Be it music, be it, uh, you know, uh, maybe learning to dance, be it anything, right? So first is learning to learn. What's the learning cycle that allows you to learn anything which is new? And this is very important because the kids that are uh, going in future, they are going to have 20 to 24 career transitions, right? That means they will be changing their area of work so many number of times. And for them, learning to learn will become very critical. Second is learning to create, whether things which are digital or physical in nature. So how do we learn to create something? Uh, you know, so for that, we need two things. One, we need inspiration. So the inspiration we get by looking at what is inside us, right? So we need to learn first to explore what is inside us, why we are here, who am I, what are my key strengths? You know, what are the things that I can do really well? And then translating that into something that the world will value, right? So learning to learn and learning to create, these are the two most essential skills that kids uh, which need to, you know, which are aiming to thrive in future would need. Uh, so that is something that we are trying to work with uh, at Art Park to incorporate that into the whole curriculum philosophy. So we started a project called Project Eklavia and we were, we were looking at like under new education policy, how can we enable better learning outcomes for our kids uh, by integrating play-based learning, by integrating uh, what we call as, uh, you know, learning by watching others, that's the peer learning, or learning by themselves, right? These are the three things which, you, which are actually proving to be quite a bit of, uh, you know, uh, shall I say, scaling up uh, perspective. And these are, these are the methods through which we are also seeing machines learning really fast, right? So at, you know, when, when we started building machines, we used to study human brain architecture, and then we would design machines. Now 
we are learning how machines are learning and then applying the principle back to human learning. And I think that's a cycle that will continue. So, so self-learning, peer learning, and third one is project specific learning. How can I apply what I have learned to something which is creative or something which is giving me an output? And then I cycle it, you know, the feedback back. So these are the three essential critical things that, you know, would love if you can learn how to enable that in your kids, how they can learn by themselves, because that reinforces the learning to learn loop. Peer learning where they're learning from other kids, maybe other educators. Fourth, the third one is learning by applying in a context of a project or something where it is very tangible, right? Uh, Art Park is collaborating with Step Foundation. Uh, it's also collaborating with Government of India, Niti Atal Innovation Mission. It is also uh, collaborating with Government of Karnataka. It is also collaborating with uh, Global Leaders in Learning, uh, University of Alto at Helsinki, Finland, uh, to co-create a philosophy which can then be applied uh, to the schools. We're calling it Eklavia Innovation Schools. So we are choosing a few schools who will work with us and we'll upgrade them uh, to be relevant in future. Uh, otherwise, the current model, which is reliant on probably things which were taught in industrial age may not be relevant in future. So with new education policy, we have a lot of flexibility uh, to choose what uh, methods, tools we pick up uh, to enforce the one learning to learn and learning to create. Uh, so we believe that you would be able to take advantage of the, the, uh, the vast amount of experience that Stampedia team has to offer and upgrade yourself. So with that, best of luck. Thank you very much. Yeah. So thank you, Makan, sir, uh, for like a wonderful, actually, I should say, there were a few uh, points which I would again like to bring in light for the teachers. So the educators, if you have like heard it, like, of course, as Makan, sir, told that we have to be the super charge for the, our students. It's really important that we have a numerous amount of students who are, uh, who don't know about these technologies but it's our responsibility to, of course, give them this opportunity. And uh, we are trying our level best with our uh, amazing collaborators like Art Park, Niti.io, and many others to bring this technology learning for you so that, of course, you can empower the young minds around you. So without a further ado, let me just share the screen and let me just give you a little idea about some of the takeaways for all the educators after the camp. So educators, how exactly this uh, bootcamp becomes very important for all of you is because here it's not only, uh, I should say student teacher, we all are educators. So this would be an, uh, this would be an amazing platform where, would we, where we would be able to exchange our knowledge on these topics. We would be learning with many other international educators. We would be helping uh, each other to enhance the 21st century skills. Along with this, we are also going to help you to get an AI and robotic resources for teaching. If you want, of course, to teach these things to the students, of course, we are going to support you for that. Along with this, we are also going to help you to give an access to the students' learning resources. Of course, some of the points we would be telling you how exactly the implementation of these things would be done uh, during our bootcamp journey. Apart from it, as I said, it's a really very necessary that you be a part of the Telegram group so that we can combine, make a wonderful uh, international educator community. We can share our knowledge. Along with this, all the educators who would be completing their complete, uh, I should say they would be completing their journey with the bootcamp with all the assigned tasks, like watching the videos, uh, going through with the learning content, submitting the YouTube video link as an assignment, would be awarded with the batches and the certificates which would be accredited by Art Park, Stempedia, and stem.org. I hope now uh, you might be very motivated to start the journey. It's always better to know a learning path before we go ahead in learning journey. I'll now ask my colleague Tina to please give us a view of our learning journey in this bootcamp. Sure, Ayush. Okay, we have 
uh, could you please uh, okay thank you uh, we have uh, two boot coming boot camps coming in li line to line the first one is level 1 that is coding and artificial intelligence in this uh, level 1 we have six sessions the first session is introduction to artificial intelligence will be understanding the basic concept of artificial intelligence will be doing some uh, projects on uh, emotion detection and all session two is of object detection we will we will be learning some object detection techniques uh, and will be doing object detection uh, activities and all the third section is of human body detection will be uh, learning some process of human body and uh, how it is detecting and all and will make a um, yeah will make a game which is controlling by uh, hand only that is by using our human body force And the next session is session four. That is natural language processing. We'll be uh, looking uh, forward with a text classifier, home automation techniques, and sentiment analyzer activity. Uh, fifth session is of machine learning. We'll be learning about machine learning, how models are created, and we'll be doing activity like animal classifier. And the last session is closing ceremony. Aish, uh, the next one. now in level 2 it is robotics and artificial intelligence that is going to uh, begin on 27th of uh, june and here also we have uh, six six sessions session 1 is uh, introduction to robotics that we will be learning about basics of robotics will make our robots to move that is quite exciting <laughs> isn't it aish yeah. and the session uh, second session is self driving uh, robot will be knowing uh, will be learning some uh, self de uh, sign detection and all and will make our robots to move by using uh, the detection only the third session is line follower will uh, understand the basic concept behind the line follower and will make our line follower robot to move the fourth session is will be dealing with ai as a delivery robot and will be uh, uh, understanding different applications of delivery robots and all the fifth session is gestor robots and will be controlling our robot by uh, showing some gestures and finally our closing session Uh, sir, uh, that is session six. That is our closing ceremony. And those who have already enrolled for this boot camp, you would be receiving your quality kit before this boot camp only. Still, if you are not enrolled, you have one more day. That is, we have extended a, a one more day. That is still twenty first of June. You can enroll this. And uh, that was like a complete schedule. And now I hand over the session to. Ayush, to know how exactly we are going to move ahead by learning through this live session and accessing the teaching resources. Over to you, Ayush. Yeah, thank you, Tina. And uh, the journey really looks amazing. And of course, uh, there are so many things to learn during these two boot camps. To understand it little more in depth, uh, I would like to show you about. the learning management system okay so this is an amazing uh, platform again created by our team for you all educators where you would be able to not only watch the live sessions but would be able to access the learning resources submit your assignments and many more things so let's go and deep dive into understanding the learning management system so i hope uh, you would be able to see my screen yeah so this is our own website your own website where you have enrolled for the boot camp that is ai.stempedia.com where you have enrolled into the international boot camp i hope you have already gone through with the website but still i wanted you to know some of the details of the boot camp which are very very necessary the first and a very important part as you know the boot camp level 1 has already started from today still if you have not registered you don't have to worry you can still register to the boot camp number 1 and boot camp number 2 by clicking on enroll now 
apart from it if you are not able to watch into the live session still you can watch these sessions into the youtube in stempedia channel the link will be shortly shared to you apart from it i would like to tell you the first boot camp is completely free of cost so you can just enroll by clicking on enroll now and can start learning through the uh, by accessing the learning management system that is your own ai.stempedia.com apart from it the second boot camp which had a price of rupees 5000 and 100 us dollar for the international educator basically the price <clears throat> is basically for the corky kit which we want uh, to get it delivered to you so that you can get an hands on activity uh, on the concept which we would be covering in the boot camp number 2 i would like to draw your attention to a special note point that if all the uh, if the teachers educators or the school already have the kits with them please feel free to please email us on the education at the rate the stempedia.com so that we can provide you the access of the boot camp number 2 that is completely free of cost because if you already have a corky kit with you you don't need to buy it again uh, at this moment apart from it still if the educators who have don't have the kits with them can still go and enroll now pay the amount and would be receiving the kits uh, within a time frame even if it gets a little delayed you don't have to worry this complete system would be available with you for coming two years so you can have uh, the access of each and every resources which we would be providing you during this uh, complete boot camp for the complete two years although we would highly recommend you to do the live sessions so can so that you can ask the questions to the educators live apart from it as i said uh, it's always uh, easy for educators especially to be live and complete the task before the another task come comes in so we would highly recommend you to join us live now here in this portal you can see once you have signed in into the uh, ai.stempedia.com you would be able to see my courses option on the left hand side top corner so you can just see i have i have been uh, marking it with my cursor this is my courses once you click on my courses you would be able to see the two boot camps or a one boot camp as per basically the enrollment you have done talking about the first boot camp once you click on the boot camp details you would be basically able to see the complete learning material for the complete lessons we which you would be taking inside the element so let me just show you by clicking on the first these sessions are going to open on every day 1 o'clock ist so here you can see you can also watch the live sessions going in or the sessions which are into youtube from this dashboard itself so even if you are not able to go to youtube you can just access this lms anytime from your phone from your uh, devices and can view the videos you have to fill the feedback and the attendance form that is very important which we would be talking about we have two different forms which uh, i would be telling you about apart from it you are you would be able to access all the learning resources apart from it we have given an a, a section in your lms where you would be submitting your daily activities which you would be making in this live session and also a section where of course of course you can come up and explore the do it yourself thing that like every time once you have completed a lesson you have to click on the mark complete option and you would be moved to the next section of that particular session so here you can see this is like a door unlocking system which would be a uh, diy but we want uh, of course like everyone should minimum submit their assignments in uh, uh, to ensure their certificate so as i said again let me just give you a glance a very important because uh, many of the educators had this question that you can watch 
the sessions in youtube anytime you want you can watch these sessions inside your uh, dashboard you can learn the things from the dashboard after completing the section you have to click on mark as complete and you would be moved to the next section how to submit the activity of course we would be talking about in a uh, in this session itself during uh, towards the end i hope the things are pretty clear and now we are ready to move with the learning journey of our of the day so let me just share back my screen so yeah uh, i hope you have got a fair idea but still if you are uh, if you are going to find any problem we have many other things we are going to have the doubt sessions which we would be talking about so we are also going to have a doubt sessions where you would be able to communicate to the live educators uh, in the zoom okay and you would be able to let us know about your doubts so that we can just help you to clarify them all and make your journey of the boot camp smooth it's very important let me just mark this again this is the my course option once you have logged in you have to click on my course and then only you would be able to see the boot camps on which you have enrolled now moving ahead with our journey again a very important part as i saw some of the uh, educators uh, wanted me to share the link so please scan this qr code and i would also request my team to please share the link of the telegram group in the youtube uh, youtube so that all the educators can be part of our telegram group and as i said it is going to be very amazing to see your creativities your videos your pictures of the projects uh, in the telegram and communicate through uh, commun we are going to communicate to through to you uh, through the telegram only so before i move ahead with the learning part i would also like to uh, uh, like uh, give a answer to one question that some educators said we haven't received an email so dear educators you might have received the email we would kindly request you to check the email hope that is not hidden sometimes automatically your emails get hidden and you have to just click on the three dots at the bottom sometimes the subject is only visible and the rest of the content gets hidden by the uh, like your email services so please make sure that you click on those three dots in order to see the complete mail still if in case you find any trouble don't worry please let us know on telegram group please let us know on education at the rate the stempedia.com uh regarding the as i said regarding the attendance form i would be talking about how exactly it has to be filled uh, why exactly it has to be filled we would be taking that so let's not uh uh like uh, make take more time to start our learning journey so starting as you know like today's session is basically introduction to artificial intelligence as if you heard mr umar khan uh, he made a very clear point that there was a point when we were trying to make humans intelligent so that of course they can make machines intelligent and then again we are taking the help of machines to make the humans intelligent so it's a complete cycle of intelligence so let's understand that what is intelligence what exactly uh, is intelligence and uh, why we are focusing it in uh, on it so much so whether it's a human or an animal intelligence it's basically an intelligence of one's capacity for the logic understanding and self awareness that how you perceive the things how you act on it so i would like to ask a small question here with all my educators if i say that there is a situation okay where uh, you got into an exam and you corrected all the the questions or you just solved a challenging puzzle in a very short time so can you please tell me how exactly you are going to feel inside you 
so i'll just repeat my question so my question is let's keep ourselves in a situation where we were in exam and at the and in the exam what happened that we got a very tough question paper but we uh, really completed everything we really answered each and every question correctly uh, in the second day what happened that we went to a uh, puzzle solving challenge and we solved a challenge in a record time so i want you to share your uh, emotions on it like how exactly you are going to feel you are going to feel happy or uh, how exactly you are going to feel yeah so can we have some response i can see some of the that's response. cool ayush let's have a look that super i can see some of the answers yeah. incredible of course it's an amazing feeling right we yeah, are really <laughs> happy okay this is great yeah tina would you like to uh, share some of the comments by the educators yeah awesome so happy uh, incredible yeah okay that's super and if i say how exactly you are going to feel please share us your uh, feeling too me i am yeah. super excited always i am super excited ayush <laughs> okay that's superb that's superb we can see even the excitement on the teachers in the chat yeah. we would be proud of course yeah, and sure. that's all the real feeling we can uh, ex- uh, we can have from the teachers yeah now but apart from it i would like to tell you we are also going to feel that we are so intelligent right that we are able to do these things uh, amazingly uh, even we sometimes we don't expect with us so that is where the intelligence coming uh, coming into play that if we are able to do these things of course we are calling us as an intelligence so i can see some uh, answers by mr sanjeev mahajan intelligent excited and that's the real point so now if i say what exactly is the human intelligence okay uh, we are calling it intelligent but why and how exactly we are intelligence as a human so the ability to perceive understand and analyze the information the ability to learn and increase the knowledge and ability to make the knowledge uh, make the decision based on the knowledge makes the human intelligent if you take an example here so you can just think of an uh, example when you might have seen the fire for the first time so what exactly happened when we were in very uh, in our uh, childhood when we just saw the fire for the first time of course we got little scared right and when we uh, went little more near to it we started feeling something uh, a little burning sensation and all and we understood this is something really very bad we should avoid the situation but what happened when we came back to home we saw that there are many sources of fire there are many ways where fire can be utilized for a many good purpose and then with the time we were able to know that fire is not only bad it is going to it is uh, helping us in lot many ways the only thing is the how the uh, the way we are using it if i say if i am going to bring a birthday cake uh, for all of you in your home at in your birthday and i'll keep up a candle on that so if the question arises that how exactly you are going to lit that candle so how exactly you are going to lit that candle although you know so many sources of fire you know the fire from the gas stove you know the fire from a different sources you are going to take a lighter or a match box right and that is the beauty of intelligence that you know everything and you are able to take a perfect decision based on your knowledge and that is what makes human a different from every person or i should say from every other creature in the world that we are able to take a decision based on our knowledge coming to a part are animals intelligent or are they different from the humans so i would like to tell of course animals are very intelligent but they are not as good as humans of course they have the intelligence 
to make their uh, i should say shelter they have an intelligence to communicate between them uh, they have an intelligence to work for their food but still we can't expect an innovation from them right they are going to be somewhere uh, need an assistance from a human somewhere when we are keeping them as a pet to do the things so as i said animals are of course intelligence and many intelligent animals we already know is dolphins we know about parrots we know about elephant right so yeah of course it is a little different than in human intelligence but as i said human intelligence is something which is going to make everything powerful now coming to our main topic that is what is artificial intelligence so now if i say artificial intelligence with this word itself you would be able to know that is there is something artificial of course that is not a, a natural right i should say so of course artificial intelligence is a study and the design of intelligent agents that we are calling as a computer which can have an ability to analyze the environment and produce the actions which can maximize the success that means any any computer who is able to take the decision by its own of course after making uh, them intelligent we can call it it is enabled by artificial intelligence there are many examples we which we talking about but if you will again i will like because it's a very root thing we sometimes we misunderstand artificial intelligence with automation or with a technology like sometimes we say computer is an uh, artificially intelligent machine we are able to open the i should say chrome we are able to open uh, many things in it but it's not that if you have to understand it with a very root that uh, important part making the things intelligent is if they are taking the decisions by their own whether we are helping the machines to take the decisions but if in case they have in a, they have got an understanding how to take the decisions we can call them an artificially intelligent machine now okay so this is the point that our computers intelligent yeah we were talking already about it so yeah we see sometimes our computers are intelligent because they help us to play game watch movies surf for internet but as we discussed it we cannot call it intelligent because it's just doing what we are asking it to do intelligence comes into play only if when it is able to take the decision so to understand it more clearly let's understand some of the examples so here are the two one of the best and my favorite examples of ai that is self driving car and alexa so in the first image you would be able to see it's an image from a self driving car where basically a car is able to detect the different objects like human like if you have noticed if you will just think for a, a moment that when i came into the camera you were in back of mind automatically was able to take a decision yeah so this is ayush and this is a human he is not a robot why because you have an that understanding you have that amount of knowledge to take a decision or make a differentiate between what is a robot and what is a human similarly if you will see here the car is able to de detect the different objects like bus car and person motorbike a very important thing to notice in this video is that it not only detecting the object but also after detection it is taking the right decision like as in the scene here you will see that once it detected a bicycle and a person on the zebra crossing it automatically got stopped and that is what we are calling the machines are intelligence of course humans are helping them to become more intelligent similarly talking about a second example that is alexa or you can take an example of a google assistant siri and many other ai assistant bot why we are asking why we are saying this is intelligent so if you we'll just uh, see a small conversation between a human and this uh home pod you would be able to see that a person asked with its own alexa that do i need an umbrella and the machine replies with no rain is expected in san francisco today 
now for a while you will think it's so easy it's not why we are calling it as an intelligent machine but if we'll go in little deep you will understand that a person is sitting inside a home a umbrella have a different purpose umbrella can be used for sunlight umbrella can be used for snowfall it can be used for rain as well but there are multiple things but when the person or the user asks this thing to a machine machine just took a decision by calculating the gps location where exactly the person is situated that he is right now at san francisco today and as per the weather condition of course the rain is something which is a climatic condition and right now there is no rain expected so there was a decision making inside the alexa of course there was a utilization of internet there was a utilization of algorithm which we are going to cover in the coming sessions like natural language processing we would be learning but at the end that we can say yeah these machines are very intelligent now why exactly we are bringing ai why we are talking of ai so here i would like to tell that with an ai of course it is a very uh, it becomes a very helpful for humans to speed up the execution like if i say that i have to segregate between some of the bad fruits and a good fruit in a basket and for a human it will take a little time okay and even after uh, some time humans can get exhausted on it and can take cannot take the perfect decision whether this fruit is good or not but with the machine it is not going to happen it is going to speed up the execution with a lot and lot of work it is never going to lazy and it is always going to come up with the accuracy apart from it a less biased and that is really very important in some of the fields that sometimes of course uh, it uh, it happens that we go little biased and we take a decision emotionally but for machines it is not going to happen like if in case uh, tina brings me a basket of fruit and someone asks that is this all good and even if i'm not liking the fruit i'm going to say yeah it's a good so because i have example i wish but but i would like to tell when there would be an ai it is not going to take that right yeah. and there can be many many other examples on maintaining the quality maintaining the accuracy so that of course we can get the wonderful outputs of ai so uh, i would now uh, request tina because she has collected some wonderful applications of ai to be uh, shared with you all so yeah tina over to you yeah um yeah sure ayush i have collected a lots of uh, a few applications that is widely using nowadays for our educators only the first one is computer vision uh as you can see here with the help of uh, artificial intelligence the computer identifies the uh, position of the pancake and it is segregating with the help of robotic arm ayush the next slide face recognition is has become very popular nowadays and uh, we know that tagging people on social media social media identifying different uh, people by seeing the faces and all it's is it is by using the technology of artificial intelligence only ayush the next one ai is the power to, powerful tool in the gaming sector nowadays and it will give a custom experience for the end user next one arsh and in the expert system we have seen uh, many recommendation uh, suggestions and coming all while opening our youtube and uh, netflix and all by using this machine learning algorithm uh, technology which is powered by artificial intelligence one is able to do that speech recognition it is it has become very popular nowadays we are using uh, siri alexa google assistant every day in our life isn't it all these examples all these applications are powered by artificial intelligence only now our focus today is 
one of this technology that is uh, face detection only. Ayush, if you could share some knowledge on face detection and that will be uh, wonderful. And I think it's a time to give a hands-on experience for all our educators. Yeah, sure, oh, Tina. Yeah, sure, Tina. And it's amazing to see a uh, superb set of examples. And especially, I'm very much uh, uh, like felt a good because these all examples, if you'll see very closely, were from the different areas of the AI. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. So that's really amazing. As uh, told by Tina, that of course, one of the very uh, common, I should say, and what a very important AI technique is face detection on which we are working day and night. If you'll see from the face camera on your smartphones to the face lock of your phones, playing the things on the, I should say the social media, uh, sorry, social media, as well as some of the face filter application using the filter yeah. that is all under the face detection. So let's understand a face detection and let's get into some hands-on activity, making it much more fun and engaging way. Wonderful, Arish. We'll go ahead. Yeah, so now the, let's understand what is face detection. So educators, face detection is basically is the action to locating in human faces in an image and uh, optionally returning a different kind of face related data. That means the machine would be able to tell you that, yeah, exactly, this is the human face, but along with this, it is also going to give you some of the answers or some of the data that what can be uh, the emotion on the face, where exactly the eyes and the nose are located, and those sort of information can be taken out using this face detection. How exactly it works? So let me just take you to a small, a very precise, that how exactly it works. So what happens in face detection is whenever you come up with an image, and your machine is artificially intelligent, your machine would be making some patterns out of it and would be comparing it to its own knowledge as the human does. And will be coming up with a final answer. Yeah, this is the human face. What exactly the data you require? There can be many data which can be uh, taken out from the face detection, including the gender, the age, Along with that, you can find out the expression as, and as I said, that you would be able to make an activity right now with us that is face expression detector. Now, how exactly we can do it, right? It's a very important that we should have a platform to do it. So we have an amazing platform to, for all of you that is PictoBlock, which is a tool to talk to the machine to bring your logic into the action. So now let's not take more time and start working on the picto block. So I would request all the educators to please download the picto blocks if, uh, if they don't have it till now, the links are already on the description. The amazing and important point of a picto blocks is that it is very much compatible with all the operating systems, whether it be on laptop, desktop, or it be on your smartphones, that is Android or iOS. So I hope you might have already downloaded the PictoBlocks. I know many educators have already worked on all of these things, but I want them to please help other educators as well, motivate them to just get these things uh, understand very easily. So talking about the PictoBlock interface, so of course we would be talking about how exactly it look and how exactly we can make the things in the PictoBlock. So let me just share my screen and show you the real PictoBlock. So before that, let me just give you an idea because I know may, there would be many educators who would be doing the things in their smartphone as well. So you don't need to worry, we would be guiding you uh, with the smartphone as well as the desktop laptop. So you don't need to worry. So if you look on like uh, right now on my screen, you would be able to see this is a PictoBlox interface from a software where there are many things like stage sprite, which we would be talking about. And uh, there are blocks and uh, we can say there are palettes and many other things. If you are using it in phone, you are going to get some 
uh, I should say interface like this. Uh, I'm sorry, uh, this is again an interface of the smart uh, of the laptop only. Yeah, so once you will get into the picture block, you would be able to see this option to check uh, where where you want to do the coding. So for as of now, you can choose a block coding because as I said, it's an amazing platform. It is also going to help you to code the things in Python, which we would talk later, of course. But for today, uh, we are going to work with the block coding. So do not forget to select block coding and get to the interface. So now, next is of course, if you are using the smartphone. So once you have downloaded the picto block, uh, once you have downloaded the picto block in your smartphone, of course you would be clicking on the icon and you would be coming to a place coming up as MySpace examples, projects, shop, learn and community. There you have to click on MySpace which will take you to your own space where all the projects get saved. At the right hand side bottom corner, you can see in the second image that there is a plus option. This plus option is going to help us to create a new project uh, and come to the coding screen. Please be patient. It will take a little time of 30 seconds, okay, as these things would be uh, working on your smartphone resources. So be patient. And once you have reached to the coding part, then everything uh, you can make and whatever the things you want to make using uh, the different extensions, which we would be talking about, you would be able to do that. Now, coming to an activity, and now I think it's a high time to start with the activity part. So let me just share my screen of PictoBlocks here. So I hope you would be now able to see my PictoBlocks screen on your uh, on your devices. So yeah, this is a PictoBlocks from software. As I said, I would be helping you to do the things in a smartphone as well. You don't need to worry. And uh, as I said, we are also going to have the doubt sessions. So you can always feel free to join us after the session and ask your questions in it. Talking about the PictoBlocks, a very important part in the PictoBlocks is the stage. You can see we have a stage where uh, we have some characters, we call them as a sprite. So in this sprite basically uh, help us to convey our uh, script, whatever the script we are using. And we make the script by dragging and dropping the blocks at the center. So let me just make it a little zoom so that you would be all able to see this. Yeah. So you can just drag these blocks to the center click on them and would be able to see the graphical representation of this complete block into the stage. Now, since today we are going to work on AI, the most important point here is that we have to select the extension. You would be wondering what is extension? So yes, in this picture block, uh, dear educators, we have added the multiple extensions, those are basically the different libraries, which is making it enable to work with almost all AI technology, starting with face detection, object detection, human body detection, machine learning, Alexa, natural language processing, recognition cards, and many more. And trust me, during this journey, we are going to take care of the maximum of the AI techniques and going to give you a hands-on on every each and every uh, extension. For today, we are going to select the first extension that is face detection. I would also like to tell you these sessions would be in uh, the YouTube and in your LMS. And in case you miss some point, you don't need to worry. You don't need to uh, worry about that. I have missed that. You can always see as many times you want. You can always see the learning resources as many times you want in your LMS. And the most important point is you should get an idea and you should get a good understanding of the topic and you have to make an assignment out of it. So once you will click on the face detection, you would be able to see a new extension has been added on the left hand side with a new set of blocks on the top. So now here I would require to switch off my camera so that I can make it enable in the picto block.
so once you have got the all blocks now we would be making on face expression detection the first important things whenever we are working on ai and especially when we are working on face detection it is very important that we should have a face to detect right and in picto blocks it's very easy to bring up your face by accessing the web camera of your devices whether it be the smartphone or whether it be a laptop or your desktop you have to just drag the first block and once you click on it you would be able to see the camera turning on on your uh, i should say stage of the picto block now since we have switched on the camera so if we'll just get back to a place where we discussed about the ai uh, steps or i should say steps of ai the first thing of course they would require a data so right now we have provided a data in the in the form of my face but now what's the second point the second and a very important point that we have to ask my machine to analyze that and that can be done using a block which says analyze the image from the camera if i click it here you would observe so you are going to observe a new uh, that my machine is able whether my machine is able to take the decision or not and now if you'll see closely my machine has taken a decision that it has found out that this is a human face yeah correct you might be thinking why exactly it is taking us so much of time so dear educators i would like to tell you machine is always going to do what the uh, humans are going to say to them so since you can see right now my video is available on the pictoblox stage but i clicked on the block that is analyze the image from the camera for only one time so once i have clicked on that that means it is going to just get to that single frame where i click this analyze uh, analyze block and was trying to find the face on that frame so right now if i bring my face outside of it it is not going to follow me since i have given this uh, i should say given this instruction for once if in case i want to give it give this instructions uh, for many times like i want it to uh, keep discovering my face over the stage i would require some block which should control which should control the things so that can be very easily done from the control palette you can just bring in the forever block so now since as we already know uh, i would like again but want to tell you the so forever block is a block from a control palette which is going to help us to uh, make the uh, make the work uh, block works again and again without stopping it so once i drag this block inside the forever and now if i click it you would be able that now my machine is able to continuously detect my face all and over the screen wherever i'm going and that is now you can say yeah this is something which we can say that this is an ai artificial intelligence that it is able to detect the faces but now if i say whether it is going to it is uh, helping me anything or uh, i should say whether it's getting me in any output so you will think on it yeah of course it is able to detect the face but what can i do with this face so as we discussed we are going to make an activity of face expression detector that means when uh, there is a face in front of my camera or i should say when there is a face in uh, in picto block it should tell the expression and that can be done with some of an amazing blocks in the face detection extension that is get the number of faces and is uh, get the expression of the face so of course these blocks we are going to use but it's very important that we make the logics and that is what uh, we uh, we want from all the kids around the world and we want you all educators also to motivate the student to come up with a different logics in it 
so now if i want to make a face expression detector of course i have a blocks i can just click and get the answer out of it but that's not the point to make a complete program as i said it's very important that we work on a logic so if i say what can be the different instances where i want my picto blocks to tell the expression of the face so if i say there would be only one instance that whenever my face is in front of the camera do you think if i am not in the front of the camera my machine would be able to make the decision and of course the answer is no so we have to create a logic we are going to use some blocks from control again that is going to be if then else now what is if then else block and it actually it's i will tell this is my favorite uh, block and a favorite condition if then else because it reminds me of many things like if i say if certain things happen then only i have to take a particular decision so if i take an example or if i bring it and relate it to the activity so i have a blocks in operator so what are operators so operators are the different blocks which are going to help me to do a mathematical operation during my coding journey so here you can see there are blocks like addition subtraction multiplication division and many other so now how can i make a logic out of it so now i have a if then else block where i would be comparing a logic but for creating a logic i would require require a comparison operator that we can take it as greater than symbol and now here you can see that i am going to compare two numbers something is greater than 50 why not keep it zero and compare the number of faces so let me just first show you what's inside this block that is get the number of faces if i'm going to click this block that is get the number of faces you would be able to see one so that is only one face is right now on the stage now if i drag this block inside this block and now this becomes a condition again a very important point that whenever you see any hexagonal blocks in picto blocks that means those are the boolean blocks boolean blocks as in these blocks are always going to give you the answer or the output either in true or in false and nothing uh, other than this it is going to give you now i have created a condition that i want to check how many faces are right now on the stage comparing it to zero the reason behind i am comparing it to zero is because i want to check whether there is a minimum one face or not because if it is even equal to zero that is of no use for me because i won't be able to track down the expression even if there is no face that would be a condition of something like this so now let's click on this condition and see what happens as i said you would be able to see a answer true or false only now i'll drag this to my if block okay and now if you will see i have a my condition ready that means that if the number of faces are great, going to be greater than 0 i would like to tell you that if in case of this the only thing what is going to happen is if this condition is true any block which you would be putting inside the else it is going to be followed as i see as i say i again if this condition is going to be true only the block which are going to be inside the if statement are going to be followed if in case this condition becomes false and in that only particular case it is going to follow the blocks which are under the else statement so let me just clear it clear the drawing again and tell you like if this green uh, condition gets Uh, i should say for uh, true so any block which are going to be kept inside if that means what does exactly i want when the condition is true so i want that it should say the expression of the face so i have a block 
which is able to say the expression but i don't want it to stay outside right i want it to be inside my program so that can be taken care by the looks palette so looks palette is basically a palette which is going to help us to of course make a beautification or get some of the outputs related to looks right now if you'll say uh, if you'll see i'll bring down a first block which says say hello for 2 seconds and if i click it here it is going to say hello and you can see the my toby just said hello so now if i'll change the text inside it so let me just put hi educators right so now if i'm going to click it on hi educators now my toby is going to say hi educators that means this block is somewhere giving me a power that what exactly i want my sprite to say i want my sprite to say the expression of the face and for that what i need to do here is i need to drag this block inside the say and you will see now any expression which was inside it like let me just click it here and you would be able to see it was neutral inside it and if i keep it inside the say block and i click it over here it is going to say the neutral right so i want of course this part to be done apart from it when i want uh, uh, what i want inside the else that means if the above condition is not true i mean to say when the this above part that is the faces are there is no face in front of the camera and at that time i want it to say no face detected okay so if i click it here it is going to stay neutral of course as there is a face but do i want all these things to happen once of course not as just we saw we are expecting some high accuracy we are expecting some high uh, speed of things so i would add this all inside the forever let me just zoom out a little bit so that you can see all of these things together the one and only block left is inside the event so that i can trigger this complete event just with a one single block so i have a block which says when green flag is clicked and this is going to activate this green flag and as soon as i put it here and now i click on the green flag you are going to observe so you can see you can make different emotions on your faces and your machine is so superb uh, superbly intelligent that it is able to take all the perfect decision that are you really happy or are you really neutral or uh, you are sad and there are many other faces uh, many other expressions which can be uh, uh, i should say detected by the pictoblock and that's the real beauty of the picto block that it is able to give you all these things just using the block coding apart from it i would like to tell you some of the implementations where uh, this kind of programs can be used so i would like to tell you in many of the different countries if you will see there are now different robots and different ai machines which is helping the old age people or even uh, the new uh, old age people to get them out of the depressions and get their uh, i should say reactions so that a particular uh, proper uh, i should say a, a proper things can be taken care like in case if it is detected that i'm happy so of course i would i can trigger some message from my picto blocks that i should be more happy or i will just crack a, uh, i should say i can keep the person motivated the main important point is if it is noticed by the machine that a person is not happy or it's sad or an angry of course we can come up with some of the implementation where we can trigger some message or we can add a joke inside it so that of course we can make the people happy and that is what makes the ai complete that when we are able to solve the different challenges around the world using the technology so i hope uh, you might have understood this completely 
if you are using it in a smartphone as i said uh, the interface might look little different but let me just yeah it might look little different but it is very similar the only difference is if you need to select the sprite you need to click on the center to select the sprite if you want to add an extension you have to go to the bottom left corner to add the extension so right now i clicked on add a sprite and you can see right now the sprite library is open okay so let me just go back to the phone screen yeah so here from this sprite library you can of course uh, choose the different sprites and of course add an extensions using an add extensions option on the bottom left corner you can see it from here once you'll click it here you would be able to see all those extensions which you were working right now on the desktop okay if you have any of the doubts i can see some of it this is only working on stage mode not in a camera mode so it is going to work on the stage as well as the camera mode if you have selected it on the block uh it's not okay so let me just take some of the questions that uh, of course we will be taking some doubts on it uh, let me just give a little idea about see these are the different extensions which you can even explore in the smartphone now coming back to solving some of the doubts of course we would be taking them but before that uh, let me just share my screen i hope you have uh, all done it correctly i know but let me just share my screen and uh, just show it to you once again yeah so i hope we have done this pretty similar that how exactly we just did it where we switched on the camera then we used the forever to analyze the different faces on the camera uh, on the stage we compared it to a zero to make a logic and then we asked for the expression and at the end of course at the else part we mentioned no face detected now coming to the next a very important part uh, which is do it yourself so of course it's very important for everyone to uh, like submit the assignments to uh, in the uh, in the assignment section so let me just take you to the assignment section i'm sorry so inside the lms as i said once you'll start going through with each and every topic hello yeah i think i'm audible now yeah so uh, as i said like once you have started learn your learning journey inside the uh, your portal that is learning management system as as i said uh, don't forget to enroll still if you have not uh, enrolled because this is something which is going to be with you for coming two years so you have a lot much time to uh, get more things and we are planning to have more boot camps during this journey sharing more resources to you so don't uh, miss this opportunity i can say right so i'm just going to the top the first session of the today so here basically i would like to tell you that you would be able to see the lesson here again and you can just go through with all the uh, resources available once you are done you have to submit your activity now what exactly is the activity so activity is basically making the same things what we have made but we want you to make it in an educative way that means where we want not only want you to understand the concept but we also want you to excel in some of the things like explaining ai so that can be done by making a small uh, video even you can use the zoom application to make the video and then you have to upload that video to a youtube channel your own youtube channel 
once you have uploaded the youtube video uh, youtube uh, once you have uploaded the video to the youtube don't forget to keep it public because of course once it is submitted to us we would be referring it we would be watching it as we are uh, going to of course get you the certificate batches and everything so it's very important for all educators to uh, make a video okay and uh, make a video copy the youtube video link and you have to click here to submit your youtube video link do not forget to name the uh, name the, of your project also we would like to tell you that we want you all to uh, explore that is a new project that is do it yourself that is door unlocking system so we would love to see your creations in telegram as well so do not forget to share your videos do not forget to share your uh, knowledge on ai and uh, i should say the pictures and the complete video what you have made in the telegram group as well so you can come to do uh, do it yourself part just click on this option and you would be able to access the resources here that is automatic door unlocking system using which you can practice more and understand more coming back to uh, the part of i hope this is very clear to all and every educators that how exactly what if i don't want to uh, my face in public youtube so of course you can take some of the uh, pictures from the uh, google of course you can upload that picture on the stage by an upload option okay and then of course you can uh, use that uh, as in i should say face expression detector but it would be great if you'll show your face uh, we would love to see you all uh, showcasing that is going to give your students more confidence that if my teachers are doing it so well of course they are going to help us to learn that now as i said do not forget to join our telegram group it's very important we would love to see your videos there also and we would love to see the photos what you are working on apart from it apart from it i would also like you all to scan this qr codes for marking the attendance so it's a very important part i want you to like uh, get, uh, understand this very carefully that we have two separate links for the attendance for all the educators around the world or india i'll repeat from all the educators around the world and india they have to scan the first qr code and as well as they have to use the first link uh, first link to fill the attendance if you are a part of niti ayog and atal innovation mission you have to fill in the second form okay so you might be thinking how would i be able to know which is the link for what if you are going to open this you would be able to find that we have mentioned the day one for atl teachers and day one for all the educators also you can mark your attendance just a second also you can mark your attendance inside the dashboard so let me just show you how exactly if you are not watching it live or if you are not able to uh, like scan the qr code anything don't you don't need to worry you can always go to your dashboard and for every day you would be able to see the attendance link just below the video so here you can see this is a day one feedback form a uh, feedback and attendance form for all the educators and we have an special attendance form that has to be only filled by the educators who have joined us through atl that is atal tinkering lab aim educators so i hope uh, you have got a clear idea on it now it's a high time to take the doubts and i would also before i take the doubt i would also like to uh, tell you about a doubt session which uh, we are wanted to uh, which you might be waiting for so we are also going to have a doubt session daily for all the educators where you can join us on the zoom and get your doubts cleared by our other educators so we have two doubt sessions uh, daily 
one is from 6 pm to 7 pm ist that is just after half an hour of this uh, boot camp then we also have a dow session at 10 pm to 11 pm ist as i said it's very important you that you be a part of the telegram group because we would be updating you with the links and all the things inside the telegram group so i think now everything is clear and i would now love to take some of the doubts and will also like tina to share her experience uh, with our today's learning and other educators also please feel free to share your experience in the chat to know and uh, to let us know how how exactly you like the session Oh, that was that was a wonderful session, Ayush. I really enjoyed, and I can see some good comments on the chat board also. Hope all our educators really uh, enjoy enjoyed the sessions, and they are of course waiting for doing this activity only. Actually, that's superb that uh, <laughs> all the educators are waiting to submit their YouTube video link, which where we would like actually the educators to uh, like come up with a little explanation about the, what they have learned, a little showcase of the coding part and of course an amazing part of how exactly their activity, activity is working. Works. Yeah, yeah, activity works. So this is actually going to help us to understand and also these videos would be helpful for their own students when they would be loved to when they are going to see their educators on youtube uh, telling about all these things that is going to be an amazing for the yeah. students so we are open for doubt uh, educators if you have any doubt please feel free to ask us and i hope like we have enjoyed the session you have definitely we have definitely added a good amount of knowledge for you and this, we want this uh, experience of your bootcamp to be very smooth as well as a very wonderful. So be a part of Telegram communicate, community to be in touch with us. And still, if you have any doubt, please feel free to share us here in the, uh, in the chat, or also we would love to uh, solve your doubts in the Telegram group and in the doubt session. Towards the end, I would also like to add a very important point that the teachers and the educators who are not watching us live, you don't need to worry. As I said, these sessions are already in YouTube. You can always uh, go ahead and uh, like see the videos, see uh, enroll into the courses, learn the things from the LMS, submit your assignment and get the certificate. So it is going to be very open for all of you. The only thing which we are recommending you to do is to follow with us, to just be with us uh, in this journey to, so that you can, of course, get a better understanding of AI, which can help your all students to make them more powerful understanding the AI. So if you have any doubts, please feel free to share your doubts. And don't forget to share your feedback and mark your attendance. That is also really very, very important, uh, dear educators. And uh, because of course we would be looking into it and your feedbacks are going to help us a lot to make our more, imp uh, like of course uh, get us more improved and bring more things for you in a much better way. So please feel free to share your honest feedbacks in the uh, in the feedback form. We are looking closely to them to bring uh, everything best what we have. So I hope uh, the teachers are pretty clear and they have got a well understanding of the today's lesson. We would be looking forward educators for your assignment videos in the LMS so that of course we can we are also planning to bring some of the best assignments in tomorrow's session so that was all for the day I hope you have enjoyed the session you have definitely uh, added some of the knowledge in your learning base and we are looking forward for your assignments and your communication over the telegram 
Till then, take care, stay safe. A very thank you and a big thanks to Art Park for helping us to make this all things uh, possible. Yeah, over to you, Tin. Yeah, uh, thank you all of you for joining this. See you tomorrow. Stay tuned. We'll be coming tomorrow. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks everyone, and I hope you have enjoyed. I can. I would before going out. I'll just take one comment. So we have that, sir. I'm not. uh getting an angry expression so i think uh you are not so angry that machine is able to say <laughs> okay but i'll tell you if you want to get the idea of the expression uh you can always go through with uh, the learning materials they have given that how exactly the expressions are detected in more details so thank you everyone for joining us and taking out your your valuable time see you tomorrow same time uh, same place and with a new activity and a new learning concept of object detection till then take care uh, bye bye stay safe